Hi, Dr. Pelto here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, warts and how you can treat them on your foot. Now, warts are very, very common, and I want to start out with kind of explaining a little bit about the anatomy. So here's an example of these little, little red things. Those are blood vessels, right? They go into the wart. They cause it to lift up, and wart kind of lives like a, almost like a parasite on your body. It kind of lives there. Your body doesn't know about it. Your body is feeding it through the blood vessel, and it just kind of sits around. A couple of good words uh, you should be familiar with. One is a mosaic word. So if you have a mosaic, it's like this big wart right here. This is hundreds of warts. It's not just one. Uh, planter warts. And the reason we call them planters is because they're on the plants or on the bottom part of the foot, but they can be anywhere on the foot or on the hand or other places. Um, and uh, this is kind of an example of a planter one that had a little pad that was going around it to take some pressure off it. So occasionally they're painful. So we put little pads around them to take some pressure off. Uh, but they can be quite inflamed, quite painful and uh, you may want them treated. One of the biggest questions I get is, do I have a wart or do I have a callus? I have a lot of patients that come in for warts that have never gotten away and they're really just a callus and other people think they have a callus and it's really a wart. How do you determine that? Well, the best way I think is um, looking at the skin line. So if you're able to, I usually use a little like a little light to look at it, but if you see a uh, interruption of skin lines, so you can see a skin line going through and around it, that tends to be more of a wart, these little black dots. But all the black dots aren't always there. So you don't always know if it's a wart. Sometimes it looks like this. This has a little circle, right? You might think it's a wart, but really this is a porokeratoma. Basically, it's a clogged sweat gland that's really deep in there, and that's a callus. And the reason you can tell is because there are skin lines going through the whole thing. That's the main difference is the skin lines. Uh, if you can't tell, you try to trim it off with a razor blade. That's what I do, and I can look at it a lot better. Well, where did I get my wart? That's what everyone asks me. Where did I get it? Well, if it's been there for a long time. I can't tell you. But if you do go to a pool or if you had a cut in the skin, uh, you could get it. If you have a callus that has a cut in it or you step on something, you could get it from that. Uh, usually it forms on wet skin like the pool or damp skin or people that sweat a lot. And occasionally you can get it from others. Everyone asks me, do I have to be careful of using the same shower or, you know, whatever, if I'm married to someone with it, it's not really an issue. It doesn't really transmit. You can't just rub someone else's foot and they can get it. They have to have a cut in the skin and you have to have a cut in yours. Um, what can I do to get rid of it? Well, it's anything that can create an immune response. You really want your own body to fight it off. And that's how you can recognize it. Okay. Sometimes they can go away, but if they're present for, I'd say three to six months, you might want to see someone you can live with it. You don't have to treat it. I have some people that live with it for years because it doesn't bother them, but it could transfer, um, could go somewhere else to another part of the, um, the, the foot could go to the hand. If you're picking it, um, uh, it doesn't usually go in the body. We call it systemic. It doesn't really go that way, but it, it can be bothersome. And most people want me, want someone to treat it. What are some of the treatments you may have tried at home? And I'll kind of explain what's the theory behind them. Um, duct tape, really that you put it on. It's not putting it on, it's, it's yanking it off. That helps. So when you're doing some of the topicals that we'll talk about in a little bit, you can put duct tape on it. Could cause more irritation. You could try apple cider vinegar. Once again, that's irritant. Uh, uh, salicylic acid is an irritant. Taping a penny would be like a metal allergy, an irritant. Uh, freezing it or burning it or cutting it are all different ways of irritating and getting a, kind of a, a response by your body to, to treat it, to kill itself. Um, what do I find most effective in my hands? And once again, if you guys have things that are better, let me know, put it underneath. Um, I know a lot of people talk about those things I just talked about, but you know, I'm not going to have someone come in and, and just do you know apple cider vinegar and things like that. They've usually tried all that stuff. They failed it. Then they come and see me. You may have found great results. You can certainly put it uh, underneath this video. Um, I find what's most effective every two to three weeks, I use cantharidin, which is called beetle juice and a laser. That's what I find most effective. It's, it's, it's hitting it twice. Uh, cantharidin is a blistering agent and the laser causes a blood blister. It takes off like a layer of the skin, creates an inflammation response. And then in between, if it's not too painful, uh, you can use two to three times a week, salicylic acid and a pumice stone. I recommend using that in the shower as you're pumicing it off. And you have to really be patient because these, if you're treating them, they take a long time to go away. Usually I set up two to three appointments at a time uh, for patients every two to three weeks. So when do you remove them? When do you just cut it out? In my hands, I, if there's one or two warts, I will remove them if it's, if it's on a painful area. If there's like a mosaic, it's huge. I tend not to do that. Um, I also do it when you want the quickest treatment is desired. And uh, there are risks. There are risks of recurrence and scarring. That's why we always don't do it. And also it just hurts. Not so much removal. It's more than numbing up. You have to numb it up 
And uh, occasionally for kids, I'll bring them to the hospital to do it. But most of the time, I'd say 90%, we do it here in the office. Um, I like these little charts. I think it helps to explain things. So let me walk you through this. Um, here are some pictures of the treatments, methods, number of visits, pain level, recurrence, and any notes. So cantharin, which I use 90% of the time, is this acid that I put on there. It causes a blister. Um, I usually do a lot of visits, but look at all of these have a lot of visits, except the surgical removal. Uh, the pain level doesn't, it doesn't hurt the day of, but it hurts three to five to seven days afterwards, whereas the laser hurts maybe for a day or two, but no pain after. So this is better if you're really, really active. Uh, recurrence is low. Now, all these are low if you really get rid of it. The biggest problem is not getting rid of it or not treating it long enough. And the benefit of cantharin, if there's no pain to apply. So this is the one I usually use for kids because if I do the laser on kids, they never come back. So laser treatment causes a blister. Uh, once again, number of visits, pain is not, it's painful the day of, but not too much the day after. And um, it's just the pain's the only thing. Uh, surgical removal is an option. Uh, you can do surgery um, plus two to three visits every couple of weeks. Um, the pain level is there for a couple of weeks because you're walking on an open wound. You're going to have a recurrence around the edges if it's going to happen. Um, that's why we try to take a little bit more around the edges. It takes two to four weeks to heal and there can be scarring. Uh, salicylic acid, I don't usually use this as a solo therapy. You may have tried this before you see someone or I'll use it in conjunction with my other treatments. Number of visits, five or more. Um, you're going to have a little bit of tenderness. Recurrence is low, but it's very ineffective as solo therapy. Same thing with this Carac and Aldera. You can make both these better by putting duct tape on it or occluding it, we call that, or covering it. Um, might need five visits or more. Pain level varies. Um, low recurrence because there's low effectiveness. Um, I made this also this treatment evaluator to make it real simple for you guys. Um, scale uh, five to one, effective discomfort and complications. So let me just keep it real simple. Most effective I do think is surgical removal, but it's also the most discomfort and uh, has the highest chance of recurrence. That's why I don't do it a lot unless there's just one. Um, down from there is the cantharidin and the laser combination, I call that. I'll do them combo. Um, has more discomfort. The reason is because the cantharidin hurts after and the laser hurts during. And so you're doing them both together, but it works best together. Um, you can use them in separate like cantharidin or laser. That's the third, which is, this is kind of where I usually start people. Um, the cantharidin usually hurts after. And for kids, I always do this. And if uh, the laser, if they're really active, I'll do this uh, for it. Salicylic acid, I very rarely do this. It's, I think it's the, the one of the least uh, effective and Carac and Aldera is, is lesser. So that's kind of how I think about it. Um, how do you prevent recurrence? Well, if it's in the same location, it's never gone. That's what you have to remember. So if it's in the same location, really never gone, um, you want to um, wear sandals in public places, examine your feet periodically for recurrence. Um, once again, if it comes back in the same place, it wasn't really gone. If it goes somewhere else, then it's a new one. And you want to prevent sweating because that's a good uh, way to get it. Okay. Something kind of off-label use, a couple of things I'll just mention here. Um, you can do an oral medication. I've, I've, I know I don't do this, but I've heard of it. And there's also a newer procedure called uh, SWIFT, which I don't have, but I've also heard of as well. That works well for really difficult ones. Once again, if you guys have any questions or comments, you can put them underneath. Um, you can also ask me a question. It's easier. If you want an actual response from me, you would go to drpelter.com or use this QR code in that one. I'll answer. I, I, I'm unable to answer all of them that are posted underneath here because there's so many. Um, but if you send one directly to me through this, I will answer you through this QR code or go to drpelter.com. On the bottom, there is uh, a place you can ask a question. Also, I have a lot of resources there, videos, courses, uh, things like that. Once again, thank you guys. I put a couple of other uh, videos here and resources that you might like. Uh, based on this topic. And I, I do hope this was beneficial for you guys. Okay. Thank you so much.